Uh, NCAM is a research and development facility here at WGBH that works on access to media for people with disabilities. We were established 19 years ago, so we're coming up on our 20th anniversary. And we grew out of WGBH's long history with making media accessible to people, originally people who are deaf or hard of hearing. That was our caption center. And then we added descriptive video service in 1990. And then in 93, we realized there's a lot of R&D projects, research, uh, software development that would really be helped by having a unit that would do that. So that's when we established, with help from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, this R&D unit called NCAM. The beginning was 72 when Julia Child's French Chef was first captioned. So that goes way back. Uh, it wasn't, was that high school? It was a long time ago. I did not do that. That was what was open captioning at the time. It was the only way you can caption stuff with burned in subtitles. And that's throughout the 70s is how we captioned TV and GBH had a department and that's where it started. So Julia was captioned and then uh, the captioned ABC Evening News, which is a rebroadcast of ABC's news with subtitles on the PBS network. So it would air at 6.30 on ABC, and this department here would quickly uh, recaption it or caption it for 11 p.m. feed on the PBS network. You know, when we did our first project oh, almost 20 years ago, I think about 18 years ago, web accessibility was new to everybody. And um, in, uh, we, we began evaluating websites and we began working with um, PBS stations, actually. They were our first web accessibility project about designing basic accessibility into websites. And um, at the time, you know, nobody knew what it was, nobody knew what to do, hardly anybody had used or heard of a screen reader. And it took a good decade for us to, us meaning the industry, NCAM as well as others in the industry, to really um, begin to make developers aware and to educate them about basic things to do for accessibility. So it, I, I would say it took at least 10 years to sort of make basic accessibility techniques a part of a developer's, developer's vocabulary. I think accessibility is definitely got a higher profile in development community now, hardware and software both, um, but the level of activity has been ratcheted up and decentralized. You know, with, with the App Store and the Android and uh, Google Play, there's just so much more to keep up with. Inaccessible websites are the product of ignorance, not in a mean way. Nobody designed the website to be inaccessible on purpose. It's just that still a lot of people don't know basic accessibility techniques. First and foremost, we work with the disabled community and we listen to what their concerns are. Uh, originally, when the iPhone came out, it was really uh, very exciting to the mainstream population. The blind community was very upset. And so we, that rose to the top of the list of issues that um, we would hope to be able to deal with. Luckily, we had a relationship with Apple, so we could work with them on finding ways to make the iPhone accessible. And amazingly enough, it's the most popular phone in the blind community now because of the work that Apple did to build accessibility in. Uh, on, on the one hand, you've got you know, things like the iPhone and the iPad, which are um, they're nicely accessible. Um, I know of several blind um, you know, contacts or colleagues that several years ago you know, were struggling with uh, you know, Symbian phones, OS phones, that switched to, to uh, iOS devices and are much happier because Apple really did do a good job designing um, voiceover into the devices and creating a way to command a, you know, a, a glass screen with a screen reader. Um, but a lot of other devices have a long way to go, which is not to say that iOS devices are, you know, they're finished, they're not, but they're, they're in pretty good shape. But yeah, mobile devices are a challenge and you know, more and more people are selling and buying mobile devices and more and more materials are being designed for these things. Um, not just websites, but eBooks, you know, other electronic publication. We've actually seen an example of that with this new law that takes effect in just a few weeks, the Communications and Video Accessibility Act for internet captioning um, and for instance uh, take a tablet whether it's an iPad or not for captions to work from a website that is streaming video in text of some form on a player on their device everyone's got to hold hands there it starts with the content provider Let's say it's PBS and PBS is streaming an episode of Masterpiece Theater 
Um, the video has to be encoded properly or tied to streaming captions. The player has to look for them. The hardware has to be able to decode them. Um, and the law actually says everyone must play nicely. Anyone who is uh, regulated by the FCC rules for internet captioning, and that's just programming that was originally captioned on TV. So Masterpiece airs with captions, it goes on the website, it has to have captions. If you're a web original program, if you've never been broadcast with captions, you're not covered. So whenever you want, you can provide the, the controls over look and feel, but you're not a regulated entity. But like a Netflix, which is streaming a lot of TV shows, yeah, yeah definitely. Hulu, iTunes, yeah, all covered. Netflix um, has been working pretty hard to uh, up the level of captions they provide. And it's pretty impressive because you can now watch captions on your iPhone, on your Netflix app. And they enabled that, I think, six months ago. So that's pretty cool looking. Um, they, as far as I know, will make the deadline. Uh, the requirement. It's a piece of cake to stick a piece of video into a web page now, and it will soon be just as easy to put captions um, into the same web page and associate them with the video. So, you know, you've got a video element, and now there's an element called track. And the track element sits as a child below the video element, and just like the video element points to a piece of video, the track element points to a text track of some kind. So captions, subtitles, even um, text audio descriptions. So instead of you know audio descriptions as a human recorded narrated track, well now you can send. You'll be able to send audio descriptions as a text track which won't be visible, but which the screen reader will see, essentially, and read out loud. There's a lot of work left to go, but there are a lot of good things that are already beginning to appear that make a difference.